Hello everyone, this is Michelangelo Badio. I'm gonna uh, start like I always do with the shout outs. I'm uh, just waiting to make sure everybody is here. <laughs> Cynthia, hey, how are you? Alexis, how are you? Uh, Jenny, how are you? Great. Yep, hi to you, Cynthia. And uh, hey, Denny, how are you? Uh, and uh, yep, a lot of people are online already. I had a really, let's see, who is that, Prince? Uh, Steve, Stephen. Uh, hey, Denny, how are you? Um, let's see, James. You know, there was an old show called The Mickey Mouse Club at Disney, and they're like, I see Michael, and I see Marsha. Sushant, how are you? It's great. Uh, Michael, hey, Austin. Austin's a good friend, and he works with me all the time. We work together. Uh, hey, Sushant, how are you? Hey, Joe. Uh, Sushant, I hope to be back uh, again. You know, it's been a few years since. Hey, Brett, how are you? Uh, hi, Diana. Okay, yeah, we have a lot of people online now. Hey, Joe. Uh, I know a lot of the, the initial names that come up, I know a lot of you. So, hey, Scotty. Um, hey, Joe. And, and anyway, I want to talk a little bit about... Well, I'm going to talk about, you know, deciding which technique to use when you're playing. But I just got, hey, Oscar, um, I just got done with a live stream on Twitch with Herman Lee, uh, uh, the other guitar player, Sam from Dragon Force, Jared Dines, uh, Stevie T, uh, Lucas Mann. It was like, you know, there was like animals as leaders. Javier was there. It was really amazing. We were playing that game Among Us. It was so much fun. And, and especially to be playing with all these, you know, known guitar players. And, and uh, you know, we just had a good time. And I'm actually pretty good at video games. You know, I don't talk about it too much. You know, people associate that, you know, if you're a little bit older that you're not a gamer. Well, I love to play. Uh, hey, Dave, uh, there's so many people online right now. Anyway, hey, Anthony, how are you? Uh, Warren, uh, there's just a lot. Okay, anyway, it's time to... pretty warmed up although I was playing video games all afternoon and Joey was like this is really funny here I'm playing this game and and Thomas uh, McRocklin was there too he's a really great guitar player and uh is that Drew hey Drew I, I haven't seen you for a long time I caught the name anyway um it was really wild because here are all these great players not all of us have met in person before and I know Herman really well and, and uh, but uh, you know some of the other players I'd met them but I don't know them even Jared Dines I mean I really like Jared he's a great guy uh, we just did a recent Shred Wars and it's on Jared's channel right now we had over a hundred and twenty thousand views uh, and it was less than one day since it was released so it just got released and I did some really crazy stuff they called it shred wars and I thought to myself the progression was basically E I'm sorry it was in the key of C minor now I tuned down a half step so that's C sharp so it was basically C sharp then it went to the four chord then it went, then it went to the flat at sixth so I said to myself, okay, the first part I could use Dorian, second part I could use natural minor, or I could play the whole uh, passage in natural minor because I could make the four chord. I could make the four chord minor or major. So I had a few scale choices. So you know what I did? I said, forget it. Is that Nick? Hey, Nick, how are you? I said, I'm going to be warped. And that's exactly what I did. 
And I, you know, I didn't mix it. I just gave it to Jared Dry. I gave it to him with some effects, which is really, for me, only delay a little bit. And, and uh, he mixed it how he wanted. But I played the first part so warped. And so outside, people were like, what's going on? Joe was like, I meant to do this. I wanted to do this. He, Joey controlled this one. He was like, listen. You can play, it's called Shred Wars, not Taste Wars. It's not like we're going to be tasty, 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 tasty. We're going to shred. I'm going to shred. And then Robert's like, he agreed. So I got the two hands to like, okay, we're going to tear this one up. And I made it so far gone. <laughs> so far gone. People are like, now, not everybody, but a few people are like, do you like doesn't sound in key, bro? But it is in key, and it's in time. And see what I did? There's a phrase in music called rubato. It's a great Italian word, and it means you stretch measures along. So you can do, see, because if a tempo's like this, does that mean I have to? Why? Why do you have to? Why do you have to do that? Why do you have to go? I said, uh uh, homie doesn't play that game. Mikey doesn't work that way. I said, it doesn't matter the notes that I group within, within a measure. All that matters is the starting and ending point, and I nailed them. And so instead of going like 188, 190 BPM, 200 BPM, ah! you know, Instead of playing it like that, I said, uh uh. Better for me. I said, I'm not going to worry or even think about meter. I'm going to play phrases that I want to play hypersonic speed and end on the right note at the exact right time. And I did it. And I'm not trying to be arrogant, but I, I approach this a completely different way. And see, Jared was really smart because he's like, okay, what are you going to do? He's going to play really tastefully. And it was it's a great shred wars. It really is great because, first of all, Jared Dines is a great guy. And secondly, he's a great online personality. And thirdly, he plays really killer guitar. So he played in his way, and he had his tone and all that, and I just played it like I didn't know what he was going to play. I had no clue. Uh, he just gave me my part. So, you know, I'm thinking, was he going to play 30 string guitars? I didn't know. But I said this, especially the first passage, because after that, it's all double guitar. And what I did on the double guitar, so I went... <laughs> I went, I, I played, uh, you know, counterpoint lines. So I had the Alberti bass guard. And so I had all this stuff going on and I made sure that it was completely dry so that he could hear that it's real. And so, and I can't say enough about Jared. I mean, he's a great, he's just really got it. You know, some people just have it and he's one of them that just does. And, and then we, we were online today playing games and it was really funny because Among Us is a cool game. And my 19 year old nephew, Alex, who's going to Loyola University, obviously online now because of COVID, he's a brilliant kid and he's a great gamer. So I go, Alex, I gotta play this game. With like a bunch of like really famous guitarists. He's like, Among Us, Uncle Mike? I'm like, how did you know? And he goes, ah, he goes, it's really popular. Because I told him. And, and so he even knew the game before I even told it to him. So we did mock uh, versions. Like we, it was just me against him. And of course he killed me every time. But, but he showed me a few tricks. So the first, <laughs> within the first few minutes, I demolished everybody, but then everybody caught up. And I have to say, Lucas Mann's one sharp guy. Everybody was sharp. But, but he was like very analytical. He, he, if he was an attorney, you would want him as an attorney. Now, why am I saying all this? Because it's my live stream, I can't. And you know why? I'm just really amped from playing with all these great guitar players because 
one of the biggest differences when I came up in the LA scene of the 80s versus today, I'm just going to tell you, if we had a round table of guitar players in the 80s, we would be like this. Joey would be like this. I'm going to kill them all. I'm going to kill them. I'm going to kill them all. I'm like, shut up, Joey. No, I swear to God, I'm going to kill them. But see, everybody else is like, I'm going to kill Badio. Oh, Michelangelo thinks he's so good. We're going to kill you. And so everybody was so... But see, in this decade, in this year, 2020, I mean, look at Herman Lee. What does he have to prove? What does Jared Dines have to prove? What does Lucas Mann have to prove? How about prove? How about Thomas McRocklin? I mean, they're all huge uh, in the guitar world. So what do they have to prove? The answer is the same thing I have to prove. Nothing. And so everybody's cool. We're all cool. We had, we had, I had the best time this afternoon, and we were goofing around. And then, and Thomas made up, made up. See, my nephew said, when you're playing Among Us, you want to, like, partner with somebody so that you have somebody that has your back during the game. And so Thomas McRocklin said the same thing. He goes, man, how come we don't, like, partner together? And, and I made a joke. I said, because we're all guitar players, and we don't trust each other. And in many ways, it's true. But I was joking around, but that was true of the past, but it's not true of the present. So anyway, that's my crazy tirade today, but you know that it will continue. Um, hey, hey, Francesco, from Italy, yes, there's so many people online right now. But I just want to say Herman Lee's really great. And, and Herman, to me, is like... He knows everybody, so he can, you know, I mean, when you can gather people, you know, from animals as leaders, me, and, and internet stars, and, you know, just all these diverse uh, genres, and put them in one, one area, and get us all to communicate, and we're all having a good time, you got to give a lot of credit to that, and, and, uh, and I, I enjoy everything, you know, and like, you know, one of the last lessons I talked about, you know, fearing change, I'm not known as a gamer. I'm not. And, and so, but, you know, I said, hey, when Herman approached me, he said, come on, Mike. He, he said, not come on. He said, uh, do you want to do this? Do you know the game? I had no clue what the game was. But I said, you know, why not go for it? What do I, you know, it's like throwing yourself in the ocean, seeing if you're going to swim. Okay, now, I am playing my new, uh, it's the Sawtooth M24 Satin Black. This guitar lists for literally in the 250 range. If you see it online at sawtoothworld.com and you say, no, dude, it's not like 200 bucks, not like 400, dude, or whatever, there is an upgrade package. So you can get all the electronics switched out, but I'm telling you, the guitar that I'm playing here right now, this exact guitar is a prototype is exactly like the $250 version. Now, when you want to decide, let's talk about this, which techniques to use. Let's take this. Okay, Eddie Van Halen, uh, if you want to check out my tribute to EVH, uh, it's on my YouTube page. Uh, I've had thousands and thousands of new subs that have come on online on my page. Um, but but why did Van Halen choose this way? See, I think tapping in the 21st century in this year is has exploded among guitar players because see, and this is why I think guitar is the greatest instrument that's ever been invented. For the first time in history, now tapping has been around many, many decades. Okay, so, you know, don't think that Eddie Van Halen invented it or Randy Rhodes. They popularized it. But if you look back decades before, there were people that were just tapping like madmen and mad women. And, and uh, so where I'm going to and what I'm alluding to with all this is that you make choices. See, with tapping on guitar, now you're in the realm of a pianist. You know, that's the technical way to say pianist. It's not pianist, pianist. And so you can play keyboard lines effortlessly with tapping. And see, Van Halen tapped into it, yes. And so, because he could have done what?
How much different it sounds if I do hammers and pull offs like now I could have done it that way. He could have done it that way, but what would that have meant? Pretty much nothing. It doesn't sound the same as I wrote a song called The Finish Line where I go And so and I started it off really cool like But what I also did is this. I used string skipping arpeggios. You know, and, and on that Paul Gilbert lesson or uh, on my original Speed Kills. And so the choices that you make with the techniques that you use create the music you want to portray to your audience. And, and uh, I think it's a very profound thing uh, in the 21st century. Now, 100 years from now, they might look at this going, can you believe like in the year 2020, they did only eight finger tapping? That was before like brain implants, dude. We're like, we could like implant like Mozart in your head, bro. So people could play anything. They like play Mozart, dude. Think about that one. Think about that. In 50 years from now, we will have implants in our brain going, I can write like the Beatles. I can write like Mozart. Now, is it, but here's what will happen. Uh, yeah, everybody will be, you know, a lot more equal as far as intellect, but there's still going to be people that write better than other people or play better than other people or look better than other people. Uh, you know, it's just the way it's going to be for forever. You know, things evolve. But some things that don't evolve is, you know, I've said this a million times. Musical people will find a way to make music. And I've used this uh, a musical analogy a lot, but I think it's very apropos for right now. If I want to play a major scale, and I just want to add rhythm. I create a Christmas carol. And so when you add a person's mind along with the technique, a musical person is going to find a way to create music. See, that's the thing with Van Halen. I mean, how many people can take a natural minor scale? And he goes... tell you something what I learned about that. Nobody has talked about this, but when I play Ain't Talking About Love, listen to pattern one. See, I go. But pattern two, he hits two C's. Two. It's a nuance that I heard the very first time I heard it. So you hear it. And so when I first played that song, I don't know if it was a mistake. I really don't, and I don't really care. Uh, but I virtually never see people play it like that. And that's the way it is. Now... When you make choices, there's a lot of choices to play in techniques. For example, I've shown this uh, Blackbird by the Beatles. Like, let me back up a little bit, put the pick of mine off.
That's the way I play it now. And you know what? It is not like McCartney. Now, Paul McCartney wrote it. He's one of, I really, truly believe 100 years from now, we are going, uh, people that are on this planet are going to still be listening to the Beatles because I think their music is every bit as good as as, as Mozart and Beethoven and Bach and him. I think why? And I've said this before, just this is two-part writing that's so great. So you have a chromatic bass line. And you have what's called, see there's parallel motion in music theory. And that just means you're playing like this. Just back and forth like this. But see, contrary motion is what McCartney does, and that's what Bach did. Contrary motion is the most musical. You play like this, then maybe a bass line might go downward, your, and your upper line might go up. In other words, it's contrary to the part underneath it, and so or above it. So in other words, it's not parallel. It's contrary, which can... Now, there are certain rules that we have now, and all these rules were made for one reason, in an attempt to explain why Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, and everyone else sounded so good. Now watch. The bass line ascend. I'm sorry. I'm watching all these names come up, sorry. Do you see how perfectly and beautiful that sounds? Listen to it again. It's so perfectly written in a two-part style. It is every bit as good as Bach. And so now here's why I'm saying, how, how does this relate to what I'm talking about? I actually figured it out like this. Like, I went like... I was playing it in like a first and second position. I go... Now the ending I got right. But instead of going... Instead of playing it like this, look at that position. I played it like this. So I played it completely different, but I got the right notes. Now, how does that work? So I had to decide not only which technique I was going to use, but where I was going to play it. And so, and this again, it, it puts you in this realm of that there's a lot of choices. And see, that's the whole essence of this lesson. There are a lot of choices to make in music, like there are a lot of choices to make in life. Now, in life, there are a lot of good choices, there are a lot of bad, and there are varying degrees. And it's the same in music. You make a good choice, you make a bad choice. You, I could have played Blackbird completely different than Paul McCartney played it. And yet I would have been theoretically correct in, in figuring out the basic notes and the basic chords that McCartney played. It's like when I, when I watch people play No Boundaries, nobody plays it exactly like me. Nobody. And I wrote the song. But yet they play a really credible, great version and they hear positions differently than me. And, and uh, even though I wrote it, it doesn't matter. There are choices that you make as a, as a musician, as a person that wants to feel and breathe music that are different from maybe and, and many times the way the composer I intended it. Um, one of the biggest things with orchestral music is we have scores. We know what Mozart meant. See, the thing about guitar that makes it so unique, how do you possibly write this? Or how, you can write this. But you can't write, 
what pickup? Yeah, you could write that. You could say neck position pickup. But why would you write that? Because guitar has so many choices of sounds. See, a violin doesn't. Violin's got one sound. It's the different techniques that you use. A flute has one sound. I mean, a piano. If you take a, a standard uh, upright piano or a concert grand, it, no matter what you use, a piano has one sound. You know what? The, and the actual name of the instrument is pianoforte. Do you have it loud or soft? But the only difference is the skill level. So if I'm playing like this and I sound really good and playing loud and soft, I sound really good. But if another player comes along and is not as good as me or is better than me, they will not change the sound of that piano. See, in guitar you have so many choices. That's what makes, in my humble opinion, the guitar the greatest instrument that's ever been invented. We can sound like anything we want, and we can always sound like us. And no other instrument can lay claim to that. A keyboard can, but you are at mercy of how good the keyboard actually is. Okay, so if you've got a million songs, you can use a million songs. Hey, that's not fair. That's not fair. No, life's not fair either. You know, so, you know, kissed by a blowtorch. You know, I mean, you know, what's fair? You know, if you're close to a hand grenade or far away from a hand grenade, it's still a hand grenade. And so life's fair? No, it never was fair. And so, but the guitar can make you sound like you. That's it. The choices of pickups, the choices of picks, the choices of strings, the wood on the neck, everything is involved with making guitar. Why does Michelangelo Badio sound like Michelangelo Badio? Because I make choices of guitar picks. I use Chroma Cast picks. Uh, guitar choices, amp choices, cable choices, note choices. And so everything is involved. So when you play a riff, for example, I showed this on the original Speed Kills, and I can't stress Speed Kills enough. Metalmethod.com. I'm just, I've been, you know, prognosticating, you know, about, you know, what will happen in the future. Or, but I can tell you this. Ten years from now, Speed Kills will be just as valid as it was when I first filmed it and, it, and just as valid as it is today. Uh, I showed this, where you can take an alternate picking riff. And play it like that. And take the same riff and do economy picking. I had to do it. I was feeling in the zone. Feeling the zone. It has nothing to do with you, Angelo. Listen, I'm the star. Joey's on a roll today. You know why? Because we did really good in Among Us. We were playing a really good game. <laughs> it's like, no, I was playing a good game. I was the one hitting the buttons. And then Robert's like, see, Robert says nothing. He's the world's angriest hand, but he's a nice hand. All he does, see, he can't talk because he's always got a pick in his hand. But see, Joey, hey! Joey's like the evil twin. You know, it's like, I remember when, when Zach Wilde had another guitar player. It's like, the other guitar player was the evil twin. Well, I have these, here's me, you know, thinking I'm a nice guy. And then I have this one hand like, hey, I can do this. Shut the heck up, Angelo. Just shut up and let me take over. So I've got this hand that's like, whoa. And I've got the other hand that's like, 
he is silent. He will not say a word, but he will follow Joey wherever Joey goes. And so it's kind of funny to me because sometimes I play things. It's like watching Eric Gales. You know, Eric Gales will play. And I'll play this thing and it'll be like, man, that was good. <laughs> and I watch him play and I see the smile on his face like, no, he's not like that, of course. But, you know, he's got the dreads and all this stuff. Not long dreads, but, you know, this wild hair. And he got this look at his face like, that was really cool. <laughs> and, and sometimes I do that to myself. Like, like I'll just play something. And I'll be like, that's really cool. You know? And it happened during Among Us today. Like, I wiped everybody out. I won the game. And I wasn't expecting to. It's not like I tried to. But I was like, I did it. That's pretty cool, man. You know, sometimes you just... And it's kind of a moral to my life story that, you know, I'm not a gamer. I, I You know, I, there's... But how could I tell you that change is okay? without being one to adapt to change. How could I do that? I could lie to you, but but being honest and say, listen, man, this is where I'm going. This is the way it is. I was more nervous today about playing a game with my fellow rock stars than I was about doing a show because it's not my arena. It's not my area of expertise. But I, I did the homework. I mean, I talked to my 19-year-old nephew, Alex, who's a genius, literally. He's the greatest kid in the world. And, I mean, you know, I'm not a confrontational person. I can tell you, honestly, I don't like to say the word, oh, honestly, because it implies I might lie other times. But I've never, ever had an argument in my entire life with my nephew. Never. And he's a kid. You know, he's still a kid. And, and, you know, he was a teenager and he, you know, he had his mom pass away. He had a lot of things happen to him. And, you know, his mom died, my sister, when he was 12. I mean, that's a hard thing for any kid. And then my mom, who was like a second mother, she passed away several years ago already, too. You know, so he was a, a kid that, that lost a lot of his family. But he's such a great kid. And I am not one that's afraid to ask for help. I've never been afraid. If somebody's out there that's hurting right now and you keep it all in to yourself, it's a mistake because you bring it out. You, I don't mean you have to post it on Facebook or Instagram or Twitch or any of the social media platforms. There is no law against asking people for help. There's no person that's self-made on this planet. None. <laughs> Now, I might do solo workshops and solo performances, but believe me, do I mix my own tracks? No. Do I do a lot of things myself? No. I work with people who are better at what they do than what I do. And, and it is a secret in life. If you have something that's bothering you, throw it out there or talk to somebody. Because... There are so many great people out there that are just willing to help because they're willing. Look at me. I'm just helping because I want to. Now, does it come back to me? Heck yes. I mean, it comes back to me a lot. I've had great success in music. But I don't do it just because I want to be popular. I want to do this. I do it because I genuinely, genuinely want to help. And I also feel that everything's going to be okay. But I'm not afraid to ask. I'm not afraid to ask for directions. I'm not afraid to pull over to a gas station or in, or in Britain, a petrol station, and ask somebody, where the heck am I and where am I going? I'm not afraid. When I was in France, I took French for two years. I know, je m'appelle Michel, quel est il? And I ask, what I, I spent time in France by myself, on my own time, because why? I wanted to see the Louvre. To see the Mona Lisa. And so I said, I don't want anybody to go with me. I want to go. I am an art fanatic. Okay. I'm an, I, I'm, I can draw really good. Obviously, I can play really good. You know, I've been an artist my whole life. But I love to see museums. I love to see art. I, I watch it. I look at a great painting and I'm just like, ah. There's, I, I'm captivated by it. I can watch it over and over. I, and so I wanted to go to the Louvre by myself. First of all, I speak a little French. I've taken it two years, but I wasn't good enough to ask for directions. They have a tube system 
like a rapid transit system, very similar to England, you know, called the two, but it, in France it's not. And I got lost on the way to the Louvre. And you know what I did? I very politely asked somebody in English, I, but I said, pardon, pardon, monsieur. And, and I, I said, look, I, I, I don't know French very well, even though I knew more than I said. I just want to hear it in English. I said, can you please direct me to how I find the Louvre? And you know what? Most Europeans, a lot of them, except if you're in Italy or Spain, they speak English. But both countries, uh, a lot of people do speak English. You go to Germany, you go to France. You know, uh, so many people speak English. So, And they said, very politely, this is how you get there. And so that's the point. If something's bothering you, seek help. And I don't mean a doctor or something, but let's say a riff is bothering you. Like, how did Michelangelo play string skipping old and picking riff? <laughs> See, I could do it economy picking, economy picking. And then I ended with alternate. So how can I do this? Seek and ye shall find. Ask for some help. Um, I'm here to help you, but if you want detailed information, go to MetalMethod.com. I'm just telling you, speed kills works. We have something with Metal Method called a Platinum Box Set. I have 13 instructional programs. There are a lot of, a lot of DVDs in here. And you can also get the downloaded version. So it's not like you're limited to a physical copy. Once you get the downloaded version, you've got it for the rest of your life. Uh, just copy it, you know, to something else. And, and so the point is this. My content is extremely detailed. And if you want to learn something, that's where you can go. What I do in the live streams is I try to generalize and try to tell you, look at this is the way Mikey thinks. I ask myself sometimes, how should I play a certain passage? Should I use alternate picking? Should I use economy picking? Should I use hammers and pull? Should I use sweep technique? Should I use tapping? So I ask myself that, but in the end, there are two considerations. Two. One, what's the most musical? And two, what's the easiest? What's the easiest way for me to play it? Because if you can play it easy and effortlessly, it sounds more musical. It's that simple. Okay, now, um, a couple other things. I want, wanted to tell you something that was a really great honor for me. I mean, I've had a lot of accolades in my life. Guitar World Magazine, uh, what's a DVD? Yeah, somebody said, you're right. That's why we do digital downloads. Uh, and so, metalmethod.com. Now, Guitar World Magazine just did a list of the 15 most influential kind of celebrity. In fact, it was celebrity and new teachers that were game changers on guitar. I was in the top three. Mel Bay, if people who are older know Mel Bay's books, have been around for over 50 years. More like 60 or 70, I don't even know the exact number. Mel Bay has taught more people to play than anyone else. But I also think somebody that was missing from the list was Doug Marks of Metal Method. He also probably is second to Mel Bay. Uh, in, in how many people he has taught. And so what I can tell you is this. Mel Bay was first. Joe Saturani was second. I was third out of 15. We changed the game in teaching. Okay. I wanted rock guitar to be the level technically, not musically, and not songwriting because we already had the Beatles and ACDC and Zeppelin. But I wanted the musicianship to be... See, Mozart had the music and he had the skill 
as a musician. See, he was a, he was a, a musical genius, but he was also a very skilled musician. He was a fantastic pianist and, you know, so what I, but see in rock, you had these geniuses writing music, but not super skilled players in the early days. And so I said, the genre of rock music, maybe you can't write a better song than Led Zeppelin or ACDC, but you can be a better musician. And that's a big difference. Okay, there, there's the music of, of the, uh, literally the music, and there's the players. The players were here, where every other genre, jazz, country, orchestral, everything was up here, but rock. The players were down here technically. The players that came before rock musicians, the Elvis Presley guitar players, and they were jazz and country. And so, you know, I mean, it was a technical level vastly above just somebody who used, you know, distortion went. <laughs> And so I wanted to raise the bar. Well, the bar's been raised. We're already there. And so if you get anything out of tonight, remember, you have choices. And if you have questions, if you don't know the answer, search. Go on, you know, go online. You, you can search anything and find out anything and everything. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Now, this guitar is in the $250 price range. I'm going to be going to LA next week to sign close to 700 guitars. We have a bunch of new MAB signature guitars. We're going to do a limited edition of my double guitar. And it's going. I have an amazing collection coming out in collaboration with the great people at Sawtooth. There's not a better company on planet Earth than Sawtooth Guitars. And they own two other companies. The, the music store, Go DPS Music, which is how I met everybody uh, almost eight years ago already. And they have another company called Chromacast, which has every musical accessory you can possibly imagine. Also, check out my YouTube page. We post this always after I do these live streams. But remember, I have had a long, long career. And the reason is I practice what I preach. I take my own advice. I'm not one that says, do as I say, not as I do. Where I tell you, eat steak! And then I'm a vegetarian or, be a vegetarian! What? And then eat steak. I'm not like that. When I tell you to practice something or to think something some way, that's how I do it. And that's exactly how I do it. And I'm living proof that it works. And I want to also thank this youngest generation of guitar players, the Jared guitar players, even the Herman Lees, the Jared Dines, they are, see, they have the spirit in the right place. They're, they're making, they're having a lot of fun, but they are bringing the guitar community together. It's much easier to talk to a Jared Dines than it is some person that's close to my age, that's never made it in music, that's bitter about everything. And I told you what Jim Gillette of Nitro said, Dude, don't ever be bitter, dude. So remember, if you have a question, find help in any way that you can. Also, if you have choices, that's life. It's not just guitar, it's life. So make the right choice. And that doesn't mean that it's the only choice. See, that's the cool thing. There might be 10 different things you can choose from, and they're all right. There might be 10 different wrong things in various degrees. Don't choose the wrong thing. Get some help, and you choose the right thing. Anyway, on behalf of Sawtooth Guitars, Sawtooth Amps, I'm using the, I've always been using this. It is a Sawtooth 20-watt tube head. You see those big stacks behind me? They're actually not that big. Check this out. Now, I've got my workout uh, sweats. They are a lot smaller than you think. They're like three quarter size stacks, but they sound absolutely amazing. And they are only 20 watts. And I'm going to tell you, I toured in the beginning of 2020 before COVID hit. 
I did so many shows with these. I had zero problems. They sounded fantastic. They're just really... They're very full sounding. So again, I'm Michelangelo Badio. I'll be here next week. And remember, practice, practice, practice. Sawtooth rules. And if you have any questions, ask. See ya.